Hi everybody, it's Midnight Cry with Deborah, and I just want to say thanks most of all for all of your prayers about the house. No, we didn't get it, but you know what? You've prayed the right prayers and God is going to absolutely give us the right house. And we don't consider it our house. We consider it God's house because our vision is to have Bible studies and we know hard times are coming. We don't know how hard and we don't know how long. The Lord hasn't told me that, but you know what? We want a place that people can come. And that's so not me. <laughs> that is such a miracle God has done in my heart. He has given me such love for the body of Christ and for his bride, those that, that are getting ready, that are getting ready for the rapture. But before the rapture, we're getting ready for the harvest and the harvest is coming. And that's why I'm praying also that anyone who has a desire to go to Waldorf and meet me there 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, along with Timothy Dixon and Manuel Johnson, our brothers in Christ, that you will be able to find a way there. If you can't afford it, that God will send you the funds that if God, um, if you don't know how you're going to get there, God will give you a way where there seems to be no way. Have faith. I want to encourage you to begin to stretch your faith in these days that we're living in. I know many of you have, but all of us can grow. He said we are supposed to go from faith to faith and from grace to grace. And so there's always more in God. That's what I love, love, love about walking with him. No matter how much we fail, no matter how much distracted we get. He's right there waiting for us. We're only, uh, really, we're not hurting him, we're hurting ourselves. Of course, it does hurt his heart, I think, when we don't spend time with him. Um, we've been so busy looking for a house and the Lord has just given us such peace uh, and he's, he's put in our hearts that he's gonna give us far better than anything we can imagine. And uh, we are looking for a house with a well and a chicken coop and fenced and cross fenced and a, uh, well, we just have a lot of, a lot of desires that we've just laid out before God. And we need flat land, we need uh, uh, a well, we need a fireplace or a, uh, a wood stove. Pray with us, I know you are, because it's not our house, it's his house. And that's what the Lord has put in our hearts that he's gonna do. He's bringing his people together. And uh, some of you have written me from the area, and I just thank you so much, uh, giving me invitations to come. Um, but right now we're getting ready to head up to Waldorf, Minnesota tomorrow morning. And um, well, we're just looking forward to seeing you there. God bless you. So I wanna get on with this word that the Lord's given me. I was studying Romans 12, and really you can find this based in Romans 12. And uh, in fact, you could get your Bibles out and you could see that as I read it, the Lord just began to expound on it to me and, and, and give me a very clear prophetic word for now, for this time, for what God is doing in his bride. Here goes. The glory of God is about to rise like a bright light on the body of Christ that will bring about the most powerful manifestation of the power of Jesus that the world has ever seen. Let his glory arise upon you now. Let his face shine on you now. Let his spirit speak to your heart right now. He wants to deliver you. He wants to heal you and fill you. He is calling you. He wants to anoint you for that calling. Release your faith right now. Shake off every religious snare. He did not call you here to this time and this place to conform into man's image or man's doctrines. Remember how Jesus talked about the doctrines of men? <laughs> he called you here to be transformed. That word transformed is metamorphi. 
and it's where we get our word for when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly called metamorphosis. Allow Holy Spirit right now to give you his thoughts to renew your minds. That's Romans 12, one through three, summed up in the words God spoke to me. Then you will be able to prove to the doubters, and there are lots of those, the will of God concerning your calling. <laughs> I'm telling you, some of you are about to walk right into your calling and it is gonna absolutely blow the devil's mind. You've been getting ready for a long time. Yes, you have. I know I'm talking to someone right now. This isn't in my notes. <laughs> You've been wanting to do the work of God a long time. And now you're finally in a place, perhaps you lost your job, perhaps the Lord said quit your job, or perhaps you've retired, I'm telling you. I just turned 71 and we're not getting older, we're getting better. This wine is not getting stale. It's being emptied from vessel to vessel. And that's what I want to do in Waldorf, Minnesota. Oh, I long for it. I long for it with all of my heart to release the anointing of God on your life and to set you free in the name of Jesus from the things that have been binding you the doctrines of men and, 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 and the words from family and friends that have really discouraged you, defeated you, sicknesses, diseases, mental torments, things that have hindered you. These are demons. And, and, and demons work through people. They, the devil uses their words to destroy you. There's life or death in the power of the tongue. And some of you, death has ministered to you long enough. And I'm saying, when you are come there this next weekend, enough is enough. Hallelujah. We're not looking for a politician to save us. We're looking for God to save America. Hallelujah. And he's going to, and he's going to use you because you're getting ready to get thrust into the harvest field. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then you will be able to prove to the doubters the will of God concerning your calling. By grace, I say to every one of you listening, don't think highly of yourself, but think highly of your God and of your brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Understand that we are all one body and not a single one of us is more important in the body than any other part. Y'all remember probably if you've been listening to me a long time, last January, I hurt this finger. And as you can see, it's still bent, but it works. And it doesn't work as well as it used to work, but I'm just gonna tell you how much problem this little finger was for months. And even now, this joint is swollen and I'm rebuking arthritis from getting in it in the name of Jesus. It can straighten out, it's just it doesn't want to because of that hump in it. And don't tell me anything to do about it because I'm, you just pray for it, okay? If you wanna do that, that would be great. Because as a nurse, I knew exactly what to do for it and did it. And I'm just telling you, I'm not going to the doctor to fix it because I have a doctor and his name is Jesus. And I'm believing that God's healing this finger. It's taken a while. Sometimes healings take longer than others. Some are miraculous. Some are instantaneous. Those are miraculous. But I believe that you are getting to re ready to walk right into the calling of God on your life and you're never gonna be more fulfilled in your life than when God's calling begins to come forth. Hallelujah. And his anointing and you hear his voice clearly and you know that you know that you know you're, you're right where you're supposed to be doing exactly what God wants you to do. There is no greater peace than that so by grace, I say to every one of you listening, don't think highly of yourself, but think highly of your God and of your brothers and sisters in Christ. Understand that we are all one body and not one of us is more important in the body than any other part. That is maturity. 
Know and understand that to perceive this and walk in this will require all of the measure of faith that God has given you to perform your individual calling. Each one of us is equally important. Be careful not to judge one another by not recognizing their function in the body, which may be very different from yours. Those who do not operate in faith for what God wants to do in his body and continue, listen, listen, listen to this. Those who do not, do not it's going to require operating in faith. Those who do not operate in faith, okay, for what God wants to do in his body, his church, his remnant, that's the ones who are sold out to the Lord and continues to criticize or judge his brothers and sisters will not walk in the glory. In fact, they will not endure the glory that is already settling on the body of Christ and will intensify and grow greater and greater in the days ahead. Greater than any generation has ever experienced that's what's coming in the time at hand you will be enabled only by his grace and his truth to walk in the power and anointing on your calling this is the fullness of your calling the fullness of the anointing in your life you must have great grace to walk in your gifting. By faith, you can obtain all the grace that you need to do what he's gifted you for. Some of you failed God and you think it's over. He's never gonna be able to use me anymore. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I want to tell you that our God is redeeming and he saves to the uttermost. And he is wanting you to know today that the gifts and callings of God are not revocable. They are irrevocable. That means nothing you've done, nobody you've been associated with, nothing that's happened to you, that the devil's done to you, can stop it if you determine, wait a minute, God gave me this gift. I was born with it. I'm going to walk in it. And it's a lie of the devil that tries to stop me. And I'm refusing it. You have to get to the place where you realize who you are. That you are the called of God. And God has got no one else on the earth but us. <laughs> to preach the gospel. And to love the lost. And to have compassion on them. We're it. Why would he want to throw you out? The church may throw you out. The religious folks may throw you out. But God isn't casting you out. Look at the woman that was caught in adultery. Go take a look at that story. So, by faith, you can obtain all the grace that you need to do what he has gifted you for. By grace, you will prophesy. By grace, you will minister. You will teach. You will exhort others and give. You'll have the, the blessings of God chase you down. As you give, he'll give you more to give and give and give and give until you just can't imagine how can I keep giving all this money. And he, you know, if he can trust you with a little, he'll trust you with much. He, he will tell you what to give and you give what he tells you to give and you can trust him that he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You will lead, you will also be a leader, okay? By my grace, says the Lord. Many will be given great gifts of mercy for the sinners that are coming, the sick, the tormented, the drug addict, those that have transformed themselves, the downcast will need great mercy. Do not be intimidated by anyone who hinders you from walking in the power to perform the gift God's given you. Loving kindness will separate the sheep from the goats. I'm going to say that again. I want you to begin to look for this. Look for this in your leaders. Look for this in church people. Look for this in denominations. 
Look and see what you see. Loving kindness will separate the sheep from the goats. Now, loving kindness doesn't mean anything goes and you just love everybody and you do. No, to, to, the fear of God says you love what God loves and you hate what God hates. You hate sin. You don't hate the sinner. You have loving kindness for the sinner, but that doesn't make you shut your mouth and not speak the truth because the truth is the only thing that will set them free. But it's got to be the love of God working through you, the love of the truth. Those are the ones that are not going to be deceived. Those who reject unrighteousness and embrace the love of the truth. Those are the ones that are gonna make it. So, if you do not see loving kindness demonstrated, do not follow them. Do not listen to those who do not give honor to others in the body or to those who are unmerciful or to those who are proud, or those who think they know everything and cannot hear. I am bringing my body into a maturity that I have longed for in my bride. You will know one another because my bride will be diligent to obey me. She will be earnest in her service to me. She will move into a spirit of rejoicing no matter how much it costs. You will know the mature because of their patience, their steadfastness, and their ability to care for the needs of others. They will bless and not curse. They will be humble and meek. They will not call for vengeance for the wrongs that they suffer, for they have learned that vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Some of you right now, you've suffered wrongs. You've had things stolen from you. You've been maligned, ostracized. I'm here to tell you, don't seek vengeance for yourself because the Lord says to you, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Be not overcome by the evil ones among you, but overcome evil with the goodness of God. The evil ones there are the demons. A f be filled with my spirit, with my joy and my fire, I will gift many of my chosen ones, those who choose me over everything and everyone in their lives. Those are the chosen ones. They will be gifted with many gifts, gifts they never knew they had will be awakened in them. They will flow in great grace and great glory. So grow my child bride. It is time to put away childish things. You find that in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Children think childish thoughts. Everything they believe revolves around them. Everything they, they experience, most of which has been given to them. They do not work. They do not care about others. They do not value the art of giving. You ever have one take a toy away from the other one, you see what I'm talking about. But I laid down my life. I gave up my earthly family. I had no place to lay my head because my burden and my life's work was to do the work of my father and to finish it. The works are finished. My lovely one, my turtle dove, enter into my mindset, my thought processes, fill your heart with my words in red and you will discern what is of me and what is not of me. What is of the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, and what is, is of the flesh of man. Do not enter into that way, but follow me. I love you and will freely give you everything you need to do my work that I am calling you to do. Come with me and we will ride this incoming wave of glory together. Hallelujah. I love you. Don't be discouraged. It's okay. God's gonna give you everything you need to do what he wants you to do. Blessings. Bye for now.